Rock File Radio on the Zoom with Brian Wheat, who really needs no introduction. You know him from Tesla, but he's had quite the varied career, and he's got a new book out. And we're going to discuss it. Brian, nice to meet you virtually. Hey, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are things with you? Everybody saying uh, safe and healthy during the pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, you know, just... You know, the guys are, uh, we're scattered all over the country and hopefully soon we'll be able to uh, get back and, and start playing some shows. Ah, we all love that. I know how much we all miss shows. I can only imagine what it's like for you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit uh, like you forget what it is you do. <laughs> so uh, what, what gave you the idea to come up with this uh, new book you have out? It just came out in December, I believe. Uh, your uh, son of a milkman, my crazy life with Tesla book is doing well. So, uh, did that come about long before this pandemic thing? You just thought it was a good oh, idea? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I started working on it about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. I think when I turned 50, <laughs> I, I actually got serious about, okay, maybe I'll, I'll write a book. And then I started on it and, um, it went through various changes and, you know, different people helping me on it. And, I think it was about a year and a half ago that I met Chris Epting, who's the co-writer of the book with me. And uh, that's when, you know, we got serious and got it to uh, the point where we put it out. So it wasn't, it wasn't the COVID thing. I mean, I, I had it done before COVID even hit. Right. You know, at that point, it was, we were in the stages of finding the release date, the cover of the book and all that. So, uh, and then it got pushed back twice because of COVID. Right. So, um, but uh, I just felt like, you know, at 50 years old, I, I was old enough as a, as a human being to sit there and say, well, here, this is my life. And, you know, as far as my part in Tesla and, and stuff, the band's career had been, you know, 30 something years at that point in time. Right. And uh, I figured, well, there's there's a story to tell that maybe someone might be interested in reading. <laughs> now, does it, go, it? I haven't read the book yet. It goes all the way back to the very beginnings when you guys were city kid. Yeah, yeah, it goes back to the beginning when I met Frank. I mean, that's where it started. It started right. with me. Me and Frank met each other, and then we, you know, started Tesla, City Kid, whatever you know. It Tesla is. It started with me and Frank. I got to tell you, I was in college when the debut album came out and we were, I had just started working in college radio at the time uh, before mm -hmm. I really got started with this whole career. But we really, we really liked the idea that you took your name and some of the song titles and stuff from Tesla. How did that all, mm -hmm. I know you guys, the, it was a suggestion to change the name, but how did the, the whole Tesla thing come about? And uh, uh, during this, don't, don't give us any juice that you're going to in the book. Cause we obviously want no, to read I mean, it, but you know, look. <laughs> Long and short of it is Cliff Bernstein, our manager, suggested the name to us. None of us knew who Tesla was. And in, you know, a hundred years, thousand years, we would have never called the band Tesla. It was brought to us. And we said, yeah, okay, we'll, 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 we'll do it. I mean, can I cuss on your show? Or yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're internet. Well, there's so. a chapter in the book called What the Fuck is a Tesla? <laughs> and that's what we said to Cliff Bernstein when he suggested we called the band Tesla. We're like, what the fuck's a Tesla? So, um, you know, and then it just kind of lent itself to, you know, what we know and, and, and uh, love about Tesla. Except now, when I call people and tell them I'm with Tesla, they ask if I'm with the car company. Right. <laughs> I say, yeah, man, I'm the CEO. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> we'll have one of those delivered to you immediately. Yeah, yeah. Just send me 125 grand and I'll send you a car. <laughs> now, a, a lot of quote unquote rock stars do the studio thing. How rewarding has it been to be running your own studio? Well, for me, I, I, I like the studio. I like being in the studio. I like being creative. And I think the natural progression is when you do what I do and you're a songwriter and a bass player and a member of a band and, you know, you produce and you do all these things is to find other young bands and bring them up and try to help them maybe get to a point where you are without having to make so many mistakes, you know. So uh, 
in a way it's you know it's it's my way of giving back in another way it's rewarding when you know one of these bands actually does something and they listen to you you feel like okay cool it's it's a natural progression you know mm -hmm. yeah which you know when 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 tesla was at its peak and you guys were filming videos and touring the world and all that stuff which do you prefer do you prefer being out on the road or do you prefer being in the studio twiddling the knobs and making things sound perfect well i think it's it's it i don't prefer one over the other you know it's like when i'm home i want to be on tour when i'm on tour i want to be home <laughs> um when i'm in the studio i want to be playing live when i'm live i want to be in the studio i i think we just make the most out of whatever you know situation we happen to be in at the time i like you know live because you get the immediate reaction from the people when you play the song so mm -hmm. that's cool but i like the studio because you can be creative and you know you're not doing the creating when you're live because you're playing what someone's already heard right so it's 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 apples and 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 you know zucchini it's not the same thing because <laughs> the public I don't, the, thing the public for, doesn't really yeah. think about all the rehearsals that go into and how many times it's like in the radio industry people will tell us we've heard that song you know I, I, you guys play that song way too much they don't know what it's like for the disc jockey who hears it every time it plays or the band that has to play it you know uh, 150 nights this year yeah, well, I, I don't get tired of playing my songs. Honestly, I mean, you know, people say, are you tired of singing signs? No, I'm not. You know, love song? No, I'm not. I mean, because every day it's a new experience. You're seeing someone right. else out there that that song is affected and they're singing it. And, you know, you see, you know, you're making them feel good by playing your music. And that's, you know, I don't get tired of doing that. Awesome. Well, yeah. I understand that you get very, very personal in this book. Uh, you talk about some of the things that that have uh, that you've overcome to to make it through the, and have the career that you've had. Yeah, yeah, no, I do. I talk about you know some of my health issues and uh, 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 you know some of my depression and, and anxiety and yeah, it's, I talk about a lot of this stuff, you know. So I just, you know, people said, did you find it hard to talk about that stuff? And not really. I mean, it was kind of like liberating to just let it go yeah, and put it out there. And, and I kind of felt that, again, if I help somebody that maybe is suffering from anxiety or depression, then, you know, I'm okay with, you know, people knowing I suffer from it. It doesn't bother me. You know, because I, I feel like, you know, if somebody in Mississippi or someone that's a Tesla fan suffered from anxiety, depression, they go, look, Brian, we, you know, he said he does too. So, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's not, um, I, I'm sorry, Chip's texting me in the <laughs> middle of my interview. <laughs> I'm like, dude. I'm in the middle of doing stuff. Um, <laughs> um, then I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to talk about it if it helps somebody. I don't care if it makes me look weak or, you know, I I, I don't care. That, that's not that's not the issue. Well, people have described the book as inspirational, so I guess you get into to what you did to get over these things or deal with them. Yeah, on a day -to -day I mean, like basis. I said, if, I hope it helps. If me sharing my story helps somebody, then I'm happy to share it. How much rock and roll dirt do you get into? Um, not that much, man. Yeah. Nah, there ain't a lot of dirt. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we did drugs. Comes with the territory. Comes with the territory, but, you know, we're like brothers and brothers fight. Sometimes. You know, we don't do that now. You know. You know, we still have discussions, I like to say. <laughs> but we, when we were younger, we were, we used to raise a little hell. So. 
so when a band goes in, uh, it's a it's an old phrase that when a band goes in to record their debut album, they have their entire lives to to write that that collection of songs, and then they have to do another one right after. Are there plans mm-hmm. to? You have poured fifty years of your life into a book. Are there plans to do another book? Yeah, yeah. I just don't know what about. <laughs> but you enjoyed the experience enough. Yeah, I really enjoyed the experience. I had a you know I have good chemistry with Chris. The guy I put the book out with, and we we talked about you know doing another book and 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 you know yeah we'll start in another one. I just don't know what it's going to be about. Maybe to expand on some of the other things that were in this book or right. You know I'm kind of all over the place, so it's kind of like you know who knows. I mean I'm, I bounce around a lot. Well, you've made a lot of friends in the industry with all those tours. Uh, how do you get Joe Elliott to write a forward? Do you just call him up or send him an email and go, hey, I've written this book. You want to talk about it? Uh, well, Joe's one of my best friends that's in a rock band. If not my best friend, that's that's in a rock band. You know, he's like a big brother to me. And he's been a, a mentor to me throughout my whole career. Um, so, yeah, I called him and said, hey, I'm putting out a book. Would you write a forward for me? And he went, well, send me the book. <laughs> so I sent him the book and he went, yeah, I'll write something for you. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's, he's that kind of guy. He's, he's a great guy. Joe Elliott, you know, he's my pal. So the book gets into uh, a, a few of your other famous pals as well. Yeah. I have a famous pal named Jimmy, that, <laughs> you know, wrote stairway to heaven. Yeah. Um, Little song. Yeah, he, he he's he's a real dear friend of mine. Um, and I met Paul McCartney. He's not my pal. I never, you know, I, I have two pals that are in rock bands. That's Joe and Jimmy. Um, you know, I'm pretty friendly with this guy, John Five. What a but what a really nice guy. John Five's a great guy. Yeah. And a great guitar player. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Um, but outside of that, I don't really talk to other guys in bands much. You know what I mean? Outside of the guys in my band. Right. Um, you know, if we see each other on the road, you know, if I see Don Dawkin or Jeff Tate or, you know, someone like that, you know, you say hello and stuff. But actually, guys that I call up or I'll see socially, you know, it's um jimmy joe and and i talk to john on the phone a lot and i see john when he's in town comes over the house that's it man i don't hang out with a lot of rock star guys do you do you uh do you have to take some time away from the industry to do um i don't know some recharging some some movie watching or or golf playing or something well i like to travel i like to travel a lot and Mm -hmm. You know, when you're on tour, you don't really get to see many things because you're on tour and you're in the venue and then you're at the gig and then you go to the next city. So, hey, there's a book idea traveling. Yeah, well, and that may very well be part of a lot of part of my next book. I do a lot of traveling and I go to a lot of different places and uh, but not with Tesla on my own. And I enjoy that. That's how I, I like to relax. It's nice that the, your, your career has given you the uh, lifestyle where you can do that. Yeah, I'm very fortunate. I'm very fortunate. Well, dude, yeah. I, I wish you a whole lot of success with the book. I have enjoyed your music for years and your work with other people and, and can't wait to hear what's next for you and the guys. And I hope everybody buys this book and, and learns something and gets inspired a bit. Yeah, read it. I think you'll get a laugh out of it. It's, it there are moments that it's really funny. Oh, I'm, you know, it's, I, it's you know i did it with with humor you know I, I tried not you know sometimes when you talk about serious issues if you add a little humor it makes it a little bit bit easier to uh take it goes down a little bit easier yeah yeah exactly <laughs> well i'll read it and i'll let you know okay buddy hey brian um, thanks for taking the time today man hey thanks for having me i'm uh, you know glad i could be here and we'll, we'll definitely and, do and it you again know, you sometime. you enjoy the Key West there. I enjoy that. <laughs> well, come on down sometime. We'll take you fishing or something. All right, buddy. Take care. All right, Brian. Take care. Bye-bye.